You're watching The 7 from WATE 6 on your side. Good evening, I'm Bo Williams, and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories right now. Topping the list for us tonight, a fire that damaged a duplex early this morning also sent a firefighter to the hospital. Six on your side reporter Veronica Obey spoke with the Knoxville Fire Department as they expressed the dangers they face and how they work to stay safe through it all. That's right. After this incident involving the injured firefighter, Knoxville Fire Department says fire safety is always important, but there are some factors to consider now that we're entering these summer months. Wilbanks explained it all happens quickly, stating that within approximately four minutes of the call, firefighters are on the scene. So health-wise, blood pressure is going up and their heart rate increases quickly. This is not including the heavy-duty work they have to do consistently until the fire is out. All of this on top of being in a very hot environment, especially in the summer. And Wilbank says firefighters have to think ahead to make sure they stay safe. And one thing they keep on their mind, especially in the summer, is hydration. They've got to think about staying hydrated, prehydrating before they come to work. Uh, lots of water while they're at work and while they're doing these firefighting activities or rescue activities, whatever they may be involved in. And when speaking with the Knoxville Fire Department, they say there are ways that you at home can help keep them safe. And one of those ways includes having a working fire alarm. Reporting in Knoxville, Veronica Obey, WATE 6 on your side. A new report was also released this morning on the damage caused by the Sevier County wildfires. It reveals the Hatcher Mountain Indigo Lane fire destroyed 125 structures and impacted a total of 213. The report shows that four structures suffered major damage, while nearly 60 suffered minor damage. Another 26 were affected by the fire. Next here on the Big 7, a special opening ceremony was held this morning for The Wall That Heals. As we've been telling you, The Wall That Heals is traveling replica of the Washington, D.C. Vietnam Veterans Memorial that is now in Knoxville. The replica was set up yesterday at Lyndhurst Cemetery. This morning's opening ceremony featured keynote speaker Bill Robinson, the longest held enlisted Vietnam prisoner of war. He gave an emotional speech honoring the nearly 59,000 people who lost their lives in Vietnam. He also offered a thank you to those veterans in attendance at this morning's ceremony. The wall will be on display 24 hours a day through Sunday, April 24th. Next on the Big 7, workers at one major McMinn County employer will now be losing their jobs. Well, Pack of Foundry announced it will idle some operations at its Etowah plant in mid-June, reducing staff by 86 percent. Community members say the company that employs a significant amount of workers in the county might leave families with no options. It's just a big shock to the whole community because we had no clue whatsoever. What are they going to do financially? How are they going to feed their kids? And now, the reason Wapaka is idling its melt, uh, its melt production, the company says the shift aligns with manufacturing efficiencies and market demand. In response, the McMinn County Mayor went to Facebook saying he's in contact with plant leadership to facilitate new employment. And a spokesperson from Wapaka says employees who want to stay with the company will be offered a $15,000 relocation bonus. Wapaka says they will be reducing the workforce at the foundry starting June 17th over a 14-day period. Next on the Big 7, the execution of Oscar Smith has now been postponed. This coming in a short time ago, as we've told you, 72-year-old Smith was scheduled to die tonight for the 1989 killings of his estranged wife and her teenage sons. Now Tennessee Governor Bill Lee releasing the following statement. Due to an oversight and preparation for lethal injection, the scheduled execution of Oscar Smith will not move forward tonight. I am granting a temporary reprieve while we address Tennessee Department of Correction protocol. Further details will be released when they are available, end quote. Next on the Big 7, a Knoxville man was arrested earlier this week for kidnapping a mom and her one-year-old child. Knoxville police say Troy Martin was driving in North Knoxville when a woman in the car texted 911 telling dispatchers that Martin was refusing to stop the car to let her and the child out. Police found the car on Edgewood Avenue near North Broadway and pulled Martin over. He initially refused to get out of the car but was eventually taken into custody. He's now being fa fa charged with two counts of aggravated kidnapping. Next on our list, a big announcement for law enforcement, uh, law enforcement canine workers in our state to be exact. Joker's Law is moving ahead in the Tennessee legislature. The bill is named after the Bradley County canine who was hospitalized in September after he was shot while pursuing car burglary suspects in Cleveland, Tennessee. 
The measure plans to toughen penalties for people who hurt law enforcement animals. As of now in Tennessee, it is considered a nonviolent crime if you hurt a police canine. The bill changes the penalty for injury or death to a canine to be a Class D felony. We talked with a professor whose community college class helped raise awareness for the bill that's now a step closer to being passed into law. It's almost surreal, especially when I mean, you have to understand we're, we're a community college, so the vast majority of my students, 17, 18, 19 years old, and these are things they've read about. And for them to have their hand in it and know that they were out front, you know, asking for those signatures, trying to set up these events, and then looking up and suddenly there was this community movement behind them. The bill passed the Senate by a vote of 31 to 1 and is now heading to a House subcommittee. In the meantime, K-9 Joker has recovered and is back on the job tonight. And rounding out the Big 7 for us, one barber is going above and beyond for his customers and their families. The owner of Covenant House of Grooming, Benton Castor, opened up his shop in December. One of his returning customers told him about their mom, who was recently diagnosed with cancer. She needed a haircut, but is not able to leave her home. And while Castor says he doesn't usually make house calls or cut women's hair, he made an exception for someone in need. He told me about two weeks ago that his mom had been diagnosed with cancer. And he said, would you mind to cut my mom's hair? He said, now she just wants a little trim. And I'm like, I don't cut women's hair. You know, I said, but I'll, I'll try to clean her up. His level of compassion, his professionalism, his understanding, you know, things like that just really helps kind of ease that pain. You know, this small act gave David's mom, Ruth, a chance to feel special, which is all Benton Castor needed for his service. He also tells us his dream is to cut hair for free for people in prison, the homeless, and for children with disabilities.